Hi folks, welcome back to Three Minute Tales. This is the She Bean and I'm your storyteller, Shanna Key. Now, today's story, we're going way back in time to the late 1700s. Aviation was only in its infancy. And if Ireland was to progress into this realm of aviation and flying, we would rely on some pioneers. And one of those was Pixie the Cat. Um, unfortunately, its legacy has been kind of lost through the annals of time. So. We decided we'd just inform you if you haven't already heard the story and um, we hope you enjoy it if you do please give it a thumbs up don't forget if you'd like to leave a comment you can do so down below and if you'd like to subscribe to the channel please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so until the next time thanks so much for your time i'm shanna key From the dawning of time, humans have had an unquenchable desire to fly. From ancient Greece's failed aviator Icarus and his fabled wings made from wax and feathers, to Leonardo da Vinci's unsuccessful 15th century design for a helicopter, men and women the world over have endeavoured to take to the skies. To soar like a bird above the treetops was nothing more than a dream, until November 1783 when Jean-Francois de Rossier Jean-Baptiste Revillon and Giraud de Villette became the first men to fly in a tethered hot air balloon in Paris, designed by their fellow countrymen, the Montgolfier brothers. A year and a half later, in the Dublin suburb of Renola, Wicklow man Richard Crosby was also attempting his own hot air balloon flight. The 30-year-old Balton Glass native, who stood 6 foot 3 inches in height, had endured many years of harmless ribbing from his friends who jokingly remarked that he already had his head in the clouds. Crosby was from a very affluent Wicklow family and was the brother of Sir Edward Crosby, who was executed for treason after the 1798 Rebellion of Carlow. Richard Crosby had always been fascinated with flying and as a child had even designed and built his own kites and gliders. After finishing his studies at Dublin's prestigious Trinity College, he dedicated all his spare time attempting to build a flying machine. After reading many papers on the success of both hot air balloons and hydrogen filled gas balloons, he set about designing a prototype that would eventually see him being Ireland's very first pilot. But before he could take to the skies, he needed to launch several balloons and track their progress across the Dublin skyline whilst following them on horseback. After losing sight of a number of prototypes, he enlisted the help of 15-year-old Kevin Travers, a neighbour who shared Crosby's love for flight. After releasing a number of hydrogen-filled balloons during the autumn of 1784, Crosby designed and built a lightweight gondola that was to be attached to a large balloon. He had planned to sit in the gondola, or chariot as he called it, and fly from Dublin across the Irish Sea to London. The gondola was a piece of engineering genius, complete with masts, sails, a sort of propeller or moulinette and a rudder for steering the device. Being the ultimate showman, Crosby secured support from some Trinity College academics and wealthy patrons to fund its development. But before he was willing to risk his life, Crosby decided to launch a smaller scaled down version containing an animal in a basket. At first he considered using his pet cocker spaniel Hinkley as the unwitting pilot. Being so fond of the dog, he reconsidered and decided against it. It was at this juncture his young helper Kevin Travers intervened. Unbeknownst to Crosby, 15-year-old Travers' amorous advances towards Alice Pocock, the daughter of the local chemist, had been met with rebuffal. The young girl had dismissed Travers' affections, commenting that she didn't like his calves lick, nor his bright ginger hair. With his pride irreparably damaged, he stole her tabby cat Pixie and offered it to Crosby as a last minute replacement pilot for the test flight. Crosby and Travers secured the hapless feline to the basket with a makeshift harness, inflated the white silk balloon with hydrogen and watched as it rose effortlessly into the afternoon sky. The two followed it on horseback and observed the balloon and basket until it disappeared into the low lying clouds. As the balloon gained altitude it was blown out to sea by strong south easterly winds. Three hours later, the balloon was spotted over the town of Cairngan on Scotland's west coast before it inexplicably changed direction 
and flew due south, eventually landing in the sea close to the Isle of Man. Two beleaguered fishermen rescued the cat from the basket and brought it back along with the basket to the town of Douglas before presenting it to the local constable. Crosby's name, address and details of the balloon flight were attached to the inside of the basket and the policeman immediately initiated plans to have the cat returned to Renla in Dublin. The cat's perilous flight was documented in many newspapers over the next few days. Word got back to Crosby that the balloon had pretty much crossed the Irish Sea. This confirmation was enough to urge the aviator to attempt the flight himself. He announced his intention to fly from Dublin to London and on the 19th of January 1785, surrounded by a crowd of up to 20,000 excited onlookers, Crosby prepared for his aerial chariot's inaugural flight. It took almost four hours to inflate the huge balloon with hydrogen before Crosby, dressed in a white silk, four-lined robe, colourful waistcoat, quilted satin breeches and Moroccan boots, took off from Renla and flew high into the air. The crowd cheered as Crosby waved at him from his chariot. After reaching an altitude of over 300 foot and gently drifting over Dublin Bay, his chariot was suddenly hit by westerly gusts that forced it back towards land. He had to abandon his plans and slowly deflate the balloon before landing safely on Dublin's North Strand. An ecstatic crowd carried Crosby shoulder high in his gondola with a balloon floating above it to the home of Lord Charlemont in Rutland Square. The next day, Crosby was given a gift of £200 for his endeavours and secured his place in aviation history. Later that year, Crosby attempted the flight for the second time, taking off from Leinster Lawn. He was almost successful but within sight of the Welsh coastline he was forced to ditch into the Irish Sea before being eventually rescued. Crosby eventually settled in the United States where he travelled widely. He lost contact with his friends and family and was found living in impoverished conditions in Baltimore and Maryland. Before his death he returned to live in Dublin and died there in 1824. With regards to the cat who had piloted Crosby's first balloon, young Alice Pocock's cat Pixie was eventually returned to Crosby's residence before Kevin Travers returned it to its delighted owner. The young girl was so overjoyed that she kissed Travers on the lips. He neglected to tell the young girl about the cat's ordeal, choosing to tell her that he'd found the cat trapped in a dustbin. The young couple began courting and eventually married four years later. They went on to have four children of their own and settled in nearby Rathmines. At the ripe old age of 91, Alice went to her grave, never knowing that her beloved tabby cat was Ireland's very first aviator.